I have genuinely really enjoyed this film because I just got to do so much and all the stuff I thought like oh we've explored that bit we've explored that bit we hadn't fully explored that bit so like the physical stuff I got to do the emotional stuff I got to do in this one is amazing the double lightsaber you got to do as well is okay we knew there was no way to tell the end of the Skywalker saga without Leia and we knew we would not recast we knew we would not use a CG character and we looked at footage that we had from Force Awakens and realized there were like, you know, a handful of scenes that we had never used. Which, of course, at the time, you know, made me miserable because I thought, well, we got to use all these scenes with Carrie. But then I suddenly realized, oh my God, thank God we didn't use these scenes because now we can use them and repurpose them. And I, I still working on the film in the editing room. Weirdly, I find it harder to believe now that she's gone because she's just so present and alive in, in the film. I got you know, some emotional scenes to do with her. And it's just weird, like, it's weird that the stuff that we did four years ago is so pertinent to the story now. It's so strange, and obviously JJ told the story that she wrote in her book to JJ, who put up with me twice, so it's so strange. He only worked with her once, so the whole thing feels quite, like, like destiny and all that sort of stuff, and I think she'd be thrilled. We're headed into Rise of Skywalker. I feel like we all want to know more about Finn, about mm. his backstory. Mm. Are we going to get the payoff? Mm. We're going to get bits of bits. We're going to get little sprinkles like chocolate chips. <laughs> but what we have to deal with right now is uh, this new enemy. And why is Ray dressed like that? I mean, who, who decided her wardrobe? Right? Yeah. Lo loads, of, loads of questions. Loads of questions. And Finn is fully involved in that, which is great. There was a moment uh, with Rose and Finn in the last one that I think fans are... Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, The Scott. kiss. Yeah, the, <laughs> the kiss. <laughs> okay. Are we going to see more of that unfold? I'm cheering for them. I'm rooting for them. Listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think there are a lot of really cool things that happen in this movie. As to what they are, I cannot say. But I'm excited for people to kind of further explore these relationships between all these incredible characters. You said relationship. I'm going to take it and run with it. Ooh, headline, baby! <laughs> <laughs> this really is the end for C-3PO? Is this... I certainly think as far as the movies is concerned that when you see The Rise of Skywalker you'll understand that it has a roundness to it. The story comes together. What have you learned from C-3PO? I feel like we've all learned something from him. One of the things I love about him is uh, his loyalty. He is, he, if he belongs to somebody, he, he will do anything for that person, whether it's a, a droid or, or Luke Skywalker or Rey. He has problems with uh, Poe. Poe has attitude. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oscar Isaac. Terrible, terrible actor. Terrible man. Oh no. I love him to be a 3PO loves him. Star Wars is so great at playing with the light and dark, but I feel like Chewbacca has always been like the fan favorite. Like he's. I mean, man's best friend, right? <laughs> uh, there's something about Chewbacca, and there's something, something great about the way that he moves and the way he's memorable. And that's uh, that's something that I inherited from Peter Mayhew, that he he made the character memorable. 3PO, where do you think you're going? It would be quite against my programming to be party to a mutiny. Hey! So I don't want to start anything, but Anthony Daniels said Poe has a bit of an attitude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he meant like a he meant like an awesome attitude, right? Sure. That was no. an implied. <laughs> that was like a, a subtext. ballet attitude. Yeah. Like yeah. as in an attitude. An attitude. This. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he meant. That's what he meant. That was great. Yeah, thanks. Done that before? I, could, I know. Yeah. So Zori, we don't know a ton about her. Tell me, tell, elaborate, please. Well, I think what we can elaborate is just that she has a little bit of a checkered past and maybe some questionable morals. But really, she's an old friend of Poe's, and um, I think uh, the entrance of Zori is there to sort of describe more of who he was, and um, you know in a very intimate way and familiar way and the friends are sort of like what do you mean you know him but also i think what's amazing with zori too is you get to kind of also hear a bit of what it is like to not be someone that's necessarily right, right. in the fight between right. either on the first order or in the resistance but in living the in the universe you know like these are the people that all this stuff is affecting when you walk onto set is it do people kind of already have their clicks or do you have to like find your way is it like oh no way no man it's just everyone's there to do a job everyone's there to have a good time and i feel like the best way to work on set is when you know everyone feels respected and 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 
and they feel like they can work together and be heard. You know, Star Wars has always been a story about good versus evil. It's always been a story about uh, fighting an oppressive regime, fighting for freedom. And my favorite thing about this one is that it's about a group of friends together on this adventure. Like, you get to see them on this crazy, thrilling adventure together uh, and not split up. So I'm really excited about that. Oh,